I'm Joe Mullings, and this is Unwinding the Headlines. Medtronic disclosed on Wednesday that it has submitted its Hugo soft tissue robotic system for CE mark approval in Europe, as well as filed for an investigational device exemption, an IDE from the FDA in the U.S. Our friend Roger Smith here shows us there are 80 plus surgical robotics companies under development currently. It's a great time for digital health. The technologies are amazing. The intelligence, drive, and talent in our industry is mind-bending. But putting out a soft tissue surgical robotic system is challenging. As an example, Medtronic has substantially revised their guidance on the Hugo multiple times over the years. The road to putting out a soft tissue surgical robotic system into the market is a lot like going from high school to playing in the NFL. Everyone has a dream. They work hard at it. Ah, but the numbers are the numbers. The football, probability of competing beyond high school. Let's look at the numbers. High school participants, 1 million and 6,000. You know how many make it to D1? 2.9% of them. Then let's take those NCAA players, 73,000. You know how many make it to this, the pros? 1.6%. The numbers are not in our favor. The dreams are there, but somebody's got to fall out. Let's look at a few of the other players that have been in the headlines lately, starting with an interesting partner of Medtronic, Titan Medical. Titan Medical, publicly traded, by the way, and I'll come back and explain to you why that's important, raised $22 million from equity financings in 2020 and over $40 million in 2021. Titan Medical generated $20 million in license revenue in 2020, from its agreements with global medical device leader Medtronic PLC and expects to generate another 21 million in additional license revenue in 2021. Those are big bets. On December 31st, 2020, Titan Medical had cash and cash equivalents of approximately $25.5 million compared to less than a million on December 31st in 2019. The cash on hand has increased further in 2021 based on proceeds of over 30 million from additional equity financings and about 10 million in warrant exercises in January and February 2021. Some guidance from leadership. With a strong cash position and expert in-house technical talent, the advanced development of the Eno surgical system is at full intensity. We plan to continue executing on our corporate milestones with the objectives of completing product development in 2020 and human clinicals in 2022. Listen to that language there. We plan to continue executing on our corporate milestones with the objectives of completing product development in 2021 and human clinical studies in 2022. You know what that means? No robot for a number of years. With its Eno surgical system over the next two years, the company plans to complete product development and tooling for initial manufacturing apply for an investigational device exemption from the US FDA, and once approved, conduct human clinical studies, compiling data to prepare for FDA marketing authorization application. We still don't have a robot. Now we go over to J&J. J&J has been uber busy with their soft tissue platform over the years, partnerships, JVs, and acquisitions. The company has been working on combining technologies that came out of its previous Verb Surgical collaboration with the Alphabet Life Sciences Unit of Verily, as well as last year's $3.4 billion purchase of Oris Health and the Monarch platform. In July, J&J decided to delay filing for 510K clearance from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for its then unnamed general surgery robot. The company had announced during its quarterly earnings call a goal of starting its first in-human studies with the system in the second half of 2022. Late in 2020, they did share the vision of the Ottawa system. The new system has six arms to provide more control, they claim, and flexibility in surgery that has not been seen before. While its arms will be integrated into the operating table, said the company, the platform has a zero footprint design to enable patient access increase space in the OR, and improve workflow, so says J&J. Now, Ottawa sounds like a different beast. Its potential to future competitors could be daunting, but this is still theoretical for now. Fred Mole, who's a genius, who also leads J&J Robotics programs, 
said J&J is well on our way to starting system verification and validation in 2021. To me, VNV is more of a prototype stage. The company is now planning on beginning verification and validation processes for Adava in 2021, followed by enrollment and clinical trials for the device in 2022. This is not stopped. J&J has said that its regulatory plans include clinical trials in 2022, and the company intends to seek a de novo clearance from the FDA shortly thereafter. I am curious, what robot will be used as a de novo clearance established as a predicate that has six arms integrated into a surgical operating table? I cannot wait to see. Now, a census, the old transanteryx, again, publicly traded. I will come back to why that is important to note. In 2020, 10 Senhan systems were installed under operating leases, nine clinical programs were initiated, and over 1,450 procedures were performed globally. The company formerly known as Transenterix has raised about 111 million in public stock offerings so far. And it seeks to evolve from a surgical robotics company to what a census CEO, Anthony Fernando, describes as a digital surgery company. I think that's a good move. The company recently received CE mark approval for its intelligent surgical unit, which adds AI-based capabilities to the company's Senhance robotic surgery system. The intelligent surgical unit, ISU, enables machine vision capabilities on the Senhance surgical system, providing Senhance digital laparoscopy programs in Europe, augmented intelligence capabilities in surgical settings, and according to a news release, the FDA cleared the ISU in March of 2020. FDA cleared. The ISU enables the camera to automatically move for a surgeon during a procedure, responding to commands and recognizing certain objects and locations in the surgical field. Imaging, navigation, critical to robotics. A census received an FDA clearance for its digital surgical assistant which it describes as the first machine vision system for robotic surgery. The company has secured a new expansive FDA clearance for its robotic system in general surgery, FDA clearance. The indicated expansion allows Senhans to be used in many high value complex reconstructive surgeries, such as those used to treat reflux and obesity. That is 2.7 million surgeries that are performed in the U.S. each year, spanning the entire abdomen, in addition to its previous clearances for gynecological surgeries. This is important, people. FDA clearance. Now, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, intuitive surgical sales for 2020, $4.4 billion, billion. And they're cracking into Asia hard. They're just starting their growth there. Despite its challenges, the opportunity ahead could produce huge gains for shareholders over the long term, which means quite a bit of dry powder against the competitors. Let's look at the numbers in China, or actually Asia. So in 2020, they sold 157 units in Asia. That was 17% of their sales overall. And that number is likely to accelerate. Here's an interesting stat for you. China became the company's number two procedure market in 2020. That success has inspired device startups in the region to innovate and compete. Might be a problem. China loves to have their homegrown product there. But I think it's quite a few years off, as proven around the rest of the world, it's not easy to do a soft tissue robot. Look at these stats. At the end of 2020, Intuitive had 3,720 Da Vinci systems in the US. That's 112 systems for every 10 million residents. In Asia, that number is just three. Do the math. The number of people in Asia. That's a big market, peeps. Developing a soft tissue surgical robotic system. Tough. Partnering on a soft tissue surgical robotic system. Tougher. Moving into clinicals with a soft tissue surgical robotic system. Oh my. Submitting for an IDE or CE mark or 510K or maybe a PMA on a soft tissue surgical robotic system. 
Oh boy. Being able to commercially launch sales, training, installs, field service support in US, OUS. This requires very deep pockets. Scalability of technology teams, workflow reconstruction, market development, clinical collaboration with users, and eventually distribution of a platform. It is incredibly difficult to be a standalone surgical robotic company. The public markets have no patience. In fact, they will punish you. Just ask our friends at Ascensus Transenteryx or Titan. Let's look at that stock. First up, Titan Medical. Look at the stock price today. $2.18. It was at a high in 2015 at something like $78. Takes a beating. Wall Street has no patience for this. Let's look at our other friends. A census. Currently trading at 350. There was a time back in 2000, late 2018, up in the low 80s. No patience on the market. Surgical robotics at scale is tough. Of course, the 800 pound gorilla, what everybody dreams of. That high school player who goes to the NFL, $747, when at one point in time, it was trading at a dollar quite a while ago. My point is, there is a pathway there. Perhaps there's more patience in the market now. And I mean I-E-N-C-E -E and I-E-N-T-S. More patience, more upside. You will see, even in Intuitive's case, in 1997 and 1998, Intuitive Surgical's first two years in business, it didn't have any sales, with 24.7 million and 30.8 million in operating losses, respectively. That was as bad as it would ever get. By 2004, it was profitable. If you exclude the first two years, it took Intuitive six years to go from zero sales to profit making. All of this means that one of the large strategics needs to come in and backstop an effort. That's where the challenges begin. The mothership gets in the mix. The non-digital leadership players moving into the digital domain because after all, it's the new shiny object that by the strategic's own admission of acquisition is going to replace the less tech, the less digitally connected, the less forward-facing surgical solutions. By sheer survival, those who lead the rear view facing technology are going to be compelled to jump to the front of the line. Now, add in the integration challenges. The founders or early innovators, while still clinically early in the developmental process, get elbowed out from around the table they've been sitting at the head at for the last few years. They feel it, their peers feel it, the spree de corps takes a big hit. Corporate oversight comes in. After all, SOPs need to be put in place. Quality systems need to be harmonized. The favorite KOLs need to get their hands on the new platforms. After all, it is hallucinated that they are the pathway to adoption and utilization. Not true, but here we are. The suffocation of what got us here has begun. Key talent stops their missionary mindset. They're forced into a mercenary mindset by the combination of the stock options at risk and the corporate latecomers driving the bot. We have to figure this out, my friends. The industry deserves it. The crippling cost of healthcare requires it. And more importantly, the patients deserve it. I'm Joe Mullings. This has been Unwinding the Headlines.